There are two main factors that affect channel stability as far as the stream is concerned. That is the erodibility of the materials within which it's formed and the binding strength of the vegetation that's on the banks and in the floodplain zone. That binding strength comes from one of three different types of vegetation, grasses, shrubs, and trees. Grasses have a relatively small root zone depth, but they're very dense, and so they provide a lot of binding, but over a very small area. Bushes and shrubs have a greater root zone depth and have an intermediate density of roots, so they do provide effective, de uh, effective binding of soils at a greater depth. Trees have the greatest root zone depth by far, but their root zone density isn't as high as that of shrubs or grasses. But all three are extremely important in stabilizing the banks and the floodplain area. Plants have enormous ability to reinforce and stabilize stream banks, and they do it primarily in two ways. The first way is to strengthen and serve as literally a rugged skeleton to bind together otherwise sometimes weak soil and sediment materials. The second way is by covering the surface, either shielding the soil layer itself from the force of moving water, or else extending a dense tangle of branches out into the flowing water to slow it near the soil surface. In a stream with good riparian vegetation, you can see how these trees and shrubs really cause the water to slow locally. These plants are well adapted, they've got great roots, they're really strong, some of them are even designed to let go of the top growth and hold on for dear life if the stresses get too high. So in the end, even though the water next door is cruising by really fast, moving a lot of sediment, moving unbelievable amounts with unbelievable force, eventually when things calm down again, you can see these systems have survived intact. These trees are growing happily as ever. The shrub communities rebound nicely. The stream has kept its form. And this system is going to keep working for decades to come. If we strip away that vegetation or reduce its effectiveness, then we remove each one of those factors. It doesn't slow down the flow anymore. It doesn't protect the bank from direct impingement from the, from the flow. And it doesn't bind the soil particles together. So we lose on three accounts. You can study streams from an aerial perspective. And in a healthy forest with an undisturbed watershed with good vegetation around the river banks, no alteration to the hydrologic inputs, that river stays really stable over time. Very few changes can be observed when you measure where the channel runs from year to year. On the other hand, when that channel comes near a highway where channels get moved around, banks get armored, stormwater inputs get elevated, when that water goes into agricultural areas where also sediment load, runoff volumes, and the vegetation on the bank, they all get altered. These are the areas where you start to see the channel respond by a lot of adjustment. That channel is constantly trying to find a new steady equilibrium state in response to those changes. And the change process the stream goes through is very uncomfortable to us. It's not good for habitat, it's not good for water quality, and it causes even more problems in terms of instability. In fact, we may even get a situation where the width of the floodplain reduces. But then you've got perfect example here, you know, people build uh, houses and, and... Well, our, our ability to analyze streams has progressed dramatically over the number of years, last number of years, with the advent of electronic aerial photography. In the old days, we had to take a, a aerial photography and piecemeal them together, and then uh, scan them and enter that uh, electronic data into uh, the map programs. Today, when we uh, get the data, it's already in electronic format, very, very high resolution. What we do is we take these photographs and we ground-proof them. We send on survey crews. They actually take positions of buildings that are common to all the aerial photography. This is an example here of several overlays of aerial photos. 1939 photo, uh, 1960s, 1970s, 1990s photos were actually uh, digitized and put in a computer and then laid one on top of the other. So you can see how much the channel has actually changed in this location over that period of time. 
Well, one study we were involved in on the White River involved the channel jumping out of its former position into a new position. It went right through a cornfield. It actually jumped out of the active channel out here and followed this new path right along this line for a distance of about 800 feet, an average width of 80 feet and an average depth of 2 feet, which is a phenomenal amount of sediment. When we look at orthophotographs, comparing them from year to year, we see the areas where the streams are stable are those areas where the riparian buffers are intact, and the areas where the most change happens are the areas where the stream corridor has not been respected. In the Agency of Transportation over the years, we see the same rivers and streams causing the same damage over and over again. We find we fixed the same spots in the same places year after year. Tropical Storm Floyd has dropped three to six inches of rain across the warning area. Heavy rain will continue for another four to six hours, which will push many small streams to near bank fall or out of their banks. Be especially cautious at night when it is harder to recognize the danger of flooding. <laughs>